Well, good morning, everybody. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, welcoming you to another episode of The Chat, along with my teaching partner, Max Massiano. Max, how you doing, bud? Hey, I'm great. How are you, Dennis? I'm good, man. Wishing you a great Sunday morning to you. All my chores are completed. And uh, now I'm sitting here. I got a little cup of coffee. Yes, sir. Nice, and uh, nice. mm, love my coffee, but I hate Starbucks. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I always believe that coffee should, you know, tiptoe across your taste buds. And when I drink Starbucks, it's like it stomps out my taste buds. So Sure. I'm not a big fan of Starbucks, but uh, in any case, uh, a little coffee goes a long, long way. I tried to Definitely. limit myself. I remember back in the day, I used to drink, oh my God, four and five cups of coffee a day. But I, yeah. I, don't, I don't do that anymore because I get the jitters. <laughs> you know, same, the jitters. Same. Like when you can you can the, hold your hand still but still texturize a haircut. Oh yeah, yeah. And my wife says, you know, talk slower. You're not even stopping for punctuation. You're just like right. ramming through the word. So anyway, it's been interesting. And uh, of course, I, I talked to you earlier before we started our broadcast today to tell you that last night I got sent a video. You know, everybody was sending me these videos, and I don't know. It's we. I love everybody in this industry, but my God, we are so crazy sometimes. Uh, tell me about it. <clears throat> we get hung up. We get hung up on stuff yeah. that, that tends to not even really have anything truly yes. to do with the it's, subject of hair right. color, right? It's not. It's not even relevant. You know, yeah. it's like you know, we might as well have a bag of bones and go in the back room and do our voodoo when we do hair right. color, or we have the great color wheel that we spin. You know, how am I going to formulate this? Just spin the wheel. You, Sylvia and I did that one year when we were teaching for Redken at the symposium. We called it the great color wheel of uh, the great color wheel of correction, and so. You know, we had all different things that you would do, and we would go up and we'd say, here's what happens most of the time when color correction comes into the salon. It's like they go back and they just spin or they ask somebody's yeah. opinion or they stare at the color wheel, you know, because we, there's so many pieces of urban legends that are out there, uh, and those are unfortunately become sometimes the rule it's yeah. just crazy insane so anyway this video showed this young lady uh and on the video it was a reel and on the video she says um i don't like to use bleach on my hair because it's damaging so instead i use this and she had a box of Arm and Hammer baking soda <laughs> and a bottle of peroxide. <laughs> and she mixed those together and worked them through her hair and um, and it lightened her hair. And of course, you know, at the end she says, see, I lightened my hair without bleach, which is in fact not what she did at all. <laughs> she created a bleaching compound. So <clears throat> I thought today we might just break out the mathematics, you know? Sure. And um, by breaking out the mathematics, uh, it's going to be confusing for some, but for some, they'll find it interesting because you'll understand why we do the things we do. So I call this a little bit of science. I love it when we talk science. We're getting sciencey. <laughs> oh, uh, Science so here we go. Uh, I'm going to minimize myself, Max. Take me out of the picture because I want this slide to be a nice close up. That's what I love about this. We can just like make ourselves smaller, uh, make ourselves larger. And here we go. Let me see if I can get out of the way here. All right, let's see if I can explain this <laughs> to everybody. So when you look at this, you see baking soda here. This is the chemical configuration for baking soda. And up here in the right-hand corner is the chemical configuration for either vinegar or peroxide. Peroxide would be different than this. It would be H2O2. But this is a vinegar 
chemical configuration. They both are the same because they're both acids. Uh, if you look down here, uh, what happens when we take baking soda and we break it down into its chemical configuration, it's also known as a base. So in chemistry, everything that is on the alkaline side of the pH scale is regarded as base. And one of the rules in chemistry is that base will always trump acid. So right. acid never wins when you mix acid and base together. In fact, the acid portion of that mixture, it begins to, it begins to degrade or decompose. So if we take base and we take baking soda, which has a pH of 9.3, and by the way, that's the pH of many alkaline permanent waves. So it is not mild mm -hmm. whatsoever. And we mix it with an acid, let's say like vinegar or peroxide, we create a decomposing compound or we create something that would be a combination of H2CO2. So everyone understands what CO2 is, I'm sure, right? It's what we breathe, mm -hmm. it's what we breathe out. Yep. It's not what we breathe in. Carbon dioxide. If we breathe it in, we die. <laughs> so, right. so that's what you're creating. It's a decomposing compound. Uh, this is what it looks like. CO2 is part of CO2 is created out of the combination. So in chemistry, many times when we mix a compound with another compound, we can create a third compound. And it may not have even existed, but by mixing the two compounds together, the third compound is created. That's the way it works in hair color with disulfide bonds. When you take and you break the disulfide bonds that hold the keratin chains together, you, you create a split bond, but you also create what is called a free radical or SO, SO3, SO3, it's cystic acid. And yeah. so you create chlorine by splitting disulfide bonds. So that's what happens many times in chemistry. So here in this situation, you create CO2, or in other words, you mix the base with an acid, and what you created was a salt, a salt that is very similar to persulfate salts. Remember in bleach, we have persulfate salts like ammonium persulfate, sodium persulfate, mag uh, potassium persulfate, all of those are persulfate salts. So those really will lighten hair. Those are really the major things in a bleaching compound that lighten the hair, that break down the melanin in the hair fiber. We add peroxide to bleach just simply to accelerate the action. So we're not waiting all day for those to lighten the hair. And you sure. create something called sodium acetate. So when you say, I don't use bleach, I use baking soda <laughs> and, and peroxide, you're actually using a bleach. It's just a different form of a bleaching compound. Well, I think that if, you, if we think about it too, it's like, what did, before we had all these teeth whitening things, right? Yes. What did we use to whiten our teeth? Baking soda. Baking soda and peroxide. You bet. Yes, absolutely. You know? And we also use baking soda to clean the terminals on our battery in our car. I forgot about that, but yeah. Why is that? Because what's built up on that battery is acid. And when you put right. baking soda on it, you get this foaming action, right? right? Cleans the battery. It decomposes the acid. Wow. Now, there's people who use sodium bicarbonate. They use that in baking. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. They say, well, it's baking powder. It's not baking powder. It's like baking powder. Baking powder has an additional ingredient called cream of tartar. And that's what allows baking powder to create, to create the swelling in the yeast so that it swells without getting extreme. When you add sodium bicarbonate to it, it really gets swollen. It really it's, gets puffy. Yeah, it's, yeah. And isn't it interesting too that like when it, when it all comes down to it, Everything is still like even in baking, just like in hair color, when you're mixing this acid and a base together, 
Yep. You, it's literally an energy relief. It's oxygen. It is. That's what lightens the hair, right? That's also what makes the, the bread rise and the cake that's, rise. That's right. Because it's a release of oxygen. That's right. So basically, it all comes back to energy. Energy it does. relief. It does. So do, do, would I recommend this? No. Uh, I wouldn't recommend, I mean, can you do it? I suppose you could, but it's not going to be any better f- for your hair. Here's the thing that I think we assume. We assume if it's not bleach, but it's something like bleach, that it's not going to be as harmful as bleach. This will decompose the hair. So it doesn't matter whether you use this or you use bleach. They both will decompose the pigment in the hair fiber. Will this decompose it at a slower rate? Probably so. All right. But it's still going to decompose it. So if the hair is in a fragile state, either one of these would be a very harsh compound to use on the hair. And so you have to treat it with respect. And, and I just like, and now, you know, people are using baking soda with shampoo to clarify the hair. Well, if your shampoo is an acid, 4.5, mm-hmm. and you mix it with a, a base, 9.3, guess what you get? You get decomposition. Well, yeah, you're going to get a chemical reaction. That's right. And so the cuticle layer of that hair is going to be abused from that compound. Right. If you want to clean the hair, there are clarifying products that you can use. That are, that are much more forgiving yes. <laughs> to the hair, <laughs> to the 100%. hair. hundred percent. So, you know, we really have to pay attention when we see stuff on social media, because man, I'm telling you, it's like, it's unending. I get videos nope. every day of the week. It's, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? Because we, in this industry, we love magic. Totally. We love magic. We believe all of these stories that are really, they're enhanced to create a visual so that you can say, wow, that sounds really great. You know, it's like uh, you apply this treatment to the hair and it knows where the negative and positive charges are in the hair and it builds a temporary bridge. Right. Well, <laughs> it builds a bridge, <laughs> but you know it doesn't. It doesn't rebond the broken disulfide bonds. It's like right. it adds stuff to the hair. Well, it, it's also kind of like thinking, and I am totally guilty of this. Honestly, up until probably the last couple of years, you know, I never looked at like when we lighten hair with lightener that the lightener is affecting the entire hair fiber. It's almost like I have this mindset that, you know, the melanin granules, the lightener is just working on that. When in fact it's lightener, you know, non-discriminate. It's, it's doing what it's doing. And, yeah. and when I saw the photos of what hair looks like after lightening, and it looks like Swiss cheese. You can see yeah. rips, depths, and tears, not only in the cortex, but the cuticle. Yeah. You know, and it, it is just a, it's a funny way of looking at it. But I think a lot of times, you know, as hairdressers, we overlook the big picture. And right. it's like, these, these products don't have a brain. We're the brain. Exactly. We are the brain. And exactly. to be mindful of that sort of thing. That's right. You know, understand there are side effects that are happening when you use the product. Absolutely. The best we can do is we can minimize the side effects by being knowledgeable about the products that we're using. 
Absolutely. That's the one thing that's important. So look, I thought this was kind of interesting to chat about today. It would make you chuckle. And then for people that are really Kim heads, you guys have a whole good thing here for you to okay. dig into. Uh, but again, you know, these answers are available to us, but we, we don't look, we don't, we don't use our due diligence and look it up. If it doesn't make sense, we simply go, Oh, okay. I'll try that. Right. And now our client who has, has paid to put food on our table, has helped us pay our car payment, helps us pay our mortgage and our rent, helps us buy clothing, helps put our children through school, now becomes a lab rat because we saw somebody do this on social media. And so we yeah, don't yeah. test it first. We test it on another human first. And if you are really environmentally conscientious about that, don't be testing on humans. No. You've got mannequin heads. You've got cotton you can test. Swatches. Swat, yeah. All of this stuff. So, so anyway, uh, that was the one thing I wanted to chat about today. But I also, in, because you know, I am a huge Karate Kid fan. I don't know about you. Do you like that show? I do like it. I grew up on Karate Kid. Right. And of course, now on Netflix, they have Cobra Kai. Right. So it's the extension. You know, Daniel LaRusso yep. is now 43 years old and still doing karate. Karate. Yes. Wax um, on, wax off. Uh huh. Wax on, or wax off. And so I thought in tribute to the Karate Kid, because the season five starts in September, uh, I would see today if Mr. Miyagi had any words of wisdom for us. And so um, let's look and see what he has to say. How about this one? Oh, you can't see. I'm going to have to uh, enlarge it, aren't I? Just a, a wee bit. There you okay. go. Let's see if we can move me over here. How's that? I'm good here. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. So. No, Daniel son, when you lighten hair, you do not remove anything. You simply change the size and shape of the bonds, which changes the way they reflect or absorb light. This changes the way or vision and way our vision interprets the color. You know, I think this is a really interesting subject um, mm -hmm. because we use a language sometimes that is not relevant to what we actually do. It's like, I'm going to remove the pigment. We don't. Yeah. Well, we even have products that are called, you know. Yeah, removers. Color yeah. pigment removers. <laughs> Hair so, color so, remover. Yeah. You know, like, and it's, it's not that simple. No. And, if, you know, and like, if you think about it, if we were simply removing pigment or you know whether natural or artificial when we rinse the hair you'd see it coming out the drain but why is it that has we, been my question for so many years <laughs> so, yeah like where did it go then it didn't go anywhere exactly exactly it's also there yeah. everything you know it's, we're we're changing plus adding right i think some of the key things here if you are making a note is that we change the shape of the bonds, the bonds that hold the hair together. That means that they are diminished. We're, we're reducing their size, making them smaller. And by making them smaller, we change their shape <clears throat> because we don't precise. They're not made smaller in equal increments. They're shattered, basically, is what's happened. And so right. based upon their size, when light strikes them, it determines what we see visually, whether we see a color or whether we see what more light reflection, less light absorption. I mean, that's actually what undertones or underlying pigment is. You know, it's like it, it, they don't really exist. You know, the only that warmth that hair contributes is created by us. Yeah. And based upon how much we break down the structure of the hair, determines how light reflective it will be, which determines how light it will be, 
which determines what level it will be, which determines what we see. <laughs> ergo, ergo, um, ergo, ergo. <laughs> and just to circle back to what we talked about earlier, it is still based on an energy release by the mixing of either a hair color or yep. lightener, which are both alkaline or bases right. with an acid, whether like hydrogen peroxide. And the volume just indicates how much energy is going to be released from that exactly. particular solution. So that's, you, have a, you have a choice, right? You right. can regulate, but yeah, too funny. Yeah, you can determine what undertone or what degree of warmth you're going to create. Absolutely. All right, let's see what's next. How about this? Oh my goodness, I like this one. No, mm -hmm. Daniel son, direct dyes cannot be driven deeper into the cuticle. This is a rumor that runs around. We try to dispel it and then it shows back up again. There's a belief system that when you use lightener on direct dyes, that the lightener drives the direct dyes further into the hair. Mm -hmm. and, we just, and they say they get stuck. They get it, stuck. It, the it, shards. It I love that. Them. They use that word. The shards oh, get no. stuck between the cuticle layers. Listen, knock, knock. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there? Lightener is a decomposing compound. It does not drive anything into the hair it decomposes everything that it touches. Right. So what we're seeing when we try to lighten a direct dye is we're seeing the stained cuticle, what's remaining of mm -hmm. the cuticle. And, and that's what gives, again, another philosophy based on an assumption, based on what they saw visually, they say, well, this is what's happening. It's not. Yeah. It's not. So the best way, of course, to lighten a direct eye or to naturalize a direct eye is to understand what naturalizing is. And you can learn that if you come to one of our educational programs. I recommend okay. it highly. All right. What else? Oh, how about this one? Uh -huh. It's like you've, you've pulled out all the good ones. for All today. the good ones, yeah. Uh, no Daniel Son, clear hair color cannot add shine to the hair unless you have a very active imagination. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Clear hair color in virtually every brand that I have ever known is nothing more than the base of the color without the dye intermediates. So there's nothing in there that will contribute to shine in the hair. Because here's right. what the law of color says. In order to have shine, you must have reflect. In order to have reflect, you must have tone. Therefore, <laughs> without tone in your color, you will get no light reflection. There's nothing right. to reflect. So, um, but there are many people, their belief system's really strong. That's what they believe. Yeah, However, I get it. you know, our job is simply to tell you what's happening and you can deal with it the way that you choose. Okay, let's see here. Mm. Oh, no, Daniel Son, you cannot seal permanent color in the hair by using a demi permanent color because they are both permanent color. Yes, they are, Mr. Miyagi. You are so smart. Demi colors and permanent colors are all permanent colors. If they have, a, if they require a developer, they are an oxidative dye. So they both, even the my even the mildest demi still operates functions processes at a ph higher than the optimum range for hair right so no matter what you use you are going to swell the cuticle Absolutely. so there's no way you can seal anything in the hair and by the way just simple science tells us the cuticle 
is semi-permeable. It has holes in it to begin with. You could not seal it unless you use something like polyurethane. You'd pick that up at Home Depot. That might seal it. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it might seal it for good. Might seal it for good. Yeah. Until so cut it out. again, these are things we have to pay attention to because these keep coming in around and showing up. I love this one. Mr. Miyagi, you are so right. Daniel-san, if you are going to wish, don't wish that hair color was easier. <laughs> wish that you had better skills and understanding of your crap. And that, my friends, is the bottom line. Boom. Wish for better skills. Work for better skills. Don't wish that it was easier because hair color is complex, but it's not complicated if you understand it. I know I'm using that word together, but you know it is complex because there's many parts. Right. But it's not complicated if you know how those parts work together. Well, exactly. As you... When you mentored me, you know, one of the first things you said to me was, Max, if you know the why behind something, then the how becomes really simple. And it is true. It's like the, the more aware we are of all the moving parts and pieces in the hair color process, and right. really knowing about hair, yes. the actual, the hair itself gets overlooked a lot. In, in a lot of classes, they become super product focused, but the hair is 50% of it what is. we're working on. You, you know, it is the canvas we're working on and you need to know how it is going to respond to changes in pH and, you know, exposure to reactive chemicals. That's all part of it. It's yeah. not just the, you know, it's not the Jetson where the, Helmet comes down and then pops back up, and you have a new hair color. Although that would be really cool. You know, it's However, like what one of my mentors used to always say: if you just if you paint trash, you just have a different color of trash. Exactly. It doesn't make the trash better. If you put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig. Yeah. Amen, brother. Amen. So. Hey, that's been pretty fun. Uh, uh, Mr. Miyagi brought us a lot of interesting things to talk about today. So let's kind of close off our episode today, Max, talking a little bit about some of the things that are upcoming for us. Yeah. And the one thing I want to talk about is uh, what we are very proud of. We are happy to announce that we have created Hair Color University. And the first session of Hair Color University will begin on October the 3rd this year. Uh, Hair Color University is the next step in your education. If you've gone to Hair Color School and you say, what's next for me? Hair Color University is that next step. It is the final step. It's sort of like your master's. And I try mm -hmm. to get away from talking about master's because they have so many different master certificates now. Everybody's making people into master's. But here's what Hair Color University is about. We wanted to raise the bar. And so we've done that with this course. Um, number one, we're going to focus on color correction. Color correction will be two weeks of sessions. So two mm -hmm. sessions back to back. And you're actually going to get some hands-on experience. We have some great at-home exercises for you to do between the classes. And then we have some great demonstrations that we'll be sharing with you to help you understand that there are steps in color correction. There's a pathway in color correction. And you can enter that pathway based upon where you are as far as your color correction scenario. Not all color correction scenarios begin at the same place. Yeah. So you enter that pathway based upon where you are. And so we feel very excited about that. Then we're going to talk, we're going to move into creative color placement. We're going to talk about what we call the elements of design. Like, what things do I look for when I am telling the story of, of the shape? Because that's our job as a colorist, mm -hmm. is really to tell the story. Now, many of us don't do that. Many of us just paint it like it is. And we do one monochromatic color and we say, yeah, we're done. Have a great life. Uh, <laughs> others of us look at the shape and say, look, that's the inspiration. I mean, 
I don't get inspired by leaves or patterns in carpet. I get inspired by shapes because yeah. I'm a painter. And so when I look at a shape, I look for certain elements in that shape that helps me to determine, number one, what my color choices are going to be, where I'm going to place those color choices, what type of a technique I'm going to use. So we're going to share that with you. That will be with demonstrations. And of course, our attendees will be required to have some mannequins so that they can perform those techniques we share with them. And the techniques that we share are what we believe are usable techniques. So it doesn't matter where you are on the skill set. You can take those techniques and you can immediately start generating income using those techniques. That's our true belief is that if you come to our educational programs and you can't generate additional income you know, after you've attended one of our classes, then you're, you've wasted your money and our class has not been beneficial. So our goal is to give you things you can take back and use in your salon immediately. Then we're going to move into blonding. We're going to talk about global lightning or we're going to talk about what blondes do we make at what levels? How do I choose a toner? Do you, do you understand that toners are like every other hair color? Toner is not a special type of color. No. It's a permanent hair color. They have background, they have tone, and they have reflect. When you apply them to lighten hair, that lighten hair is 50% of what the result will be. So it really falls back into the normal formulation that we do, but sometimes we don't know how to choose a toner or how to even change a toner. Some of us become so familiar with one toner formula. That's what we tone everybody with. Again, it's that magic, Max. It's that like, oh, okay. you mean I can use that on anybody? Yeah, good. Then that's my toner. I'm going to use it on everybody. You know, we said you could use it on anybody. We didn't say use it on everybody. So you heard us wrong. <laughs> so... <clears throat> And that's why it ends up being the same. You know, my good friend Roy Peters tells a story when he had a salon in Dallas, Texas. You know, he had his clientele were really the socialites of Dallas. And mm -hmm. um, he was invited to a special luncheon. And about six of the women that came to his salon were chairing that. They were the group that was chairing that, that, uh, that function. And he said, I was sitting there and I looked at the front of the room and every one of those women had the same color blonde hair because I had used the same toner on all of them. And he said, I felt so embarrassed. I was hoping and praying that they didn't notice that they all mm -hmm. five looked alike because we get a favorite toner and we tone everybody with that instead of saying, wait a minute, I have a huge selection in toners. Sure. You know, this is not just one. I have a huge selection. So we're going to talk about blonding and toning. And then we're also going to incorporate in each one of our sessions, some business strategies. How do you charge for color correction? Yeah. That's always been a challenge. You know, how do I, cons how do I figure out what I charge? How do I charge for my creative color placement? Because, you know, you've got to ask yourself, you know, am I charging the right amount? Am I charging enough? If this client, if I'm doing a technique that she's not going to come back for six months, did I charge enough when I did her hair that time right. to replace the revenue she would be generating for me if she came back every once a month or every three months? But people don't think about that. They just go, well, I'm charging this. And now you don't see anybody for six months. Right. I don't, I don't want that client coming into me at least every three months. I don't want six month people because there's way too much. There's too many variables that will occur in a six month space. Absolutely. Absolutely. So those are our four sessions. Um, we're very excited about that. We will have a fifth session, which will be a debrief session. So uh, at the end of Hair Color University, you get a beautiful certificate, and then uh, we will bring you back on 30 days after that 
for a debrief to find out where you are, how it's working for you, because we want you to be equipped. Our whole yep. goal is to give you information that's going to help you become more successful. So um, anything I missed and, on Hair Color University, Max? Uh, the only thing I would add, too, is uh, we are going to really dive deep into the corrective color consultation. And I'm I'm just super excited that what what we've done is we've laid out a essentially like a sequence that you can use every time you have a color correction in your chair. And really, you know, more often than not, we are doing some form of color correction, even yes. on some of our regular clients. So I just feel like this really uh, puts the, the polish on those finer right. points of, you know, consultation, hair color analysis, and it will also help you take your formulation skills to the next level. So I, I'm just really excited and I'm excited to see how our students grow from this experience because this is going to be our, our first run of Hair Color University. Yes, absolutely. I'm very excited about it. You're absolutely right. And then there's a couple of things we want to share with you. People have been asking. And so we are just, uh, say, today is Sunday, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, we should have in our hot little hands uh, our first copies of Captain Color versus the Pigment Pirates. So for those of you that are on the pre-order list, your book will be sent to you soon. For those of you who have not pre-ordered and you wish to, you still can for the remaining part of this next week. After that, there will be no, no first copy pre-orders. And um, then you'll have to order on Amazon, on Barnes & Noble's Nook, on the Bookshelf. Uh, we will also be on other, other book, uh, other, other online se sellers. But I know for sure we'll be on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Bookshelf. So you can is, order a copy there. Is Amazon doing um, also a Kindle version? Like yes, they are. They will, okay. Yeah, they will be doing. Well, I mean, Barnes and Noble will have the physical book in the Barnes and Noble bookstore, and yes. we will also have it on Nook. And Amazon will yes. be doing a Kindle version as well. So you can have a print copy or a digital copy or both. Or both, absolutely. So awesome. we're very excited about that, and uh, it's been a long time coming. So hopefully. Uh, we have uh, shared some nuggets of information with you today, and uh, you have enjoyed uh, our little visit. Uh, it's, uh, as always, it's always fun talking to Max. We invite you to follow us. You can find Max at Max M. Hair on Instagram. You can find me at Real Captain Color. Our other coach, Yvette Fontani. You can find her at Yvette underscore Fontani uh, on, um, on Instagram. You're invited to visit our website, which is www.gurunation.net. Uh, www uh, <clears throat> or you can find it if you want an easier access to it. You can go to my bio and Instagram, or you can simply just type this in on your computer, which would be link tree forward slash real captain color. And it will take you to our website and to our educational page. So uh, we invite you to follow us on Facebook. Uh, we have a page there, a public page called Guru Nation. And we have a closed group called Guru Hair Tribe. Uh, so if you wish to become part of Guru Hair Tribe, just simply apply for admittance and we'll get you involved in that. And that takes care of that. Max, anything we need to cover or did we get it all? I, I think we got it all done and dusted. Done and done. And so with that, I say everybody have an amazing week. We wish you all the best. Hopefully we see you soon again on our next episode. But until then, from my heart to yours, I am Captain Color and I am out. Max, how about you? I am out as well. All everybody right. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care. Bye. See you all soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>